in this video, I want to continue the series that we started talking about racial capitalism and the worker strike. I think that it's a really interesting set of places to talk about where the cap kind of evolves for this resolution and thinking about the way in which it presents like really central problems to the way in which we think about the worker strike as a whole. Um, if you haven't, I would definitely watch the last two videos that I had, which is first the intro to racial cap on a worker strike resolution and why I think the cap needs to kind of change the terms that it's using in order to be really strong on a resolution like this but why I think that's good in order to really push the idea of like what types of methods that people are kind of like talking about which is something that we'll revisit in this video and I would definitely watch the video after that which is kind of like the part one for where we're like directly continuing off for this video that just kind of talks about what I think are just some of the general priorities that racial capitalism should have on the negative versus a policy team and the ways that you can set up like framing and thesis arguments that accompany like those priorities in order to set like a really strong top level mutual exclusivity claim about the way in which they're thinking about the concept of the worker and why their over-reliance on the worker as a kind of like status or as a way of thinking about like agency destroys our ability to think about like what resistance looks like in other places. And in this video, I kind of want to continue some of that discussion and talk about its relationship specifically in the context of like link debating, permutation debating, impact comparison, and alternative debating. And I think that that kind of will give you a much more fuller picture of how these things get debated out and answer like some of like the caveats that I think that a lot of teams would be worried about, which is like permutation arguments and like really strong link turn arguments from from the um affirmative team which i definitely think are like significant things to keep on your mind but i don't actually think stops this argument from being like incredibly strong on this resolution and still being a central uh thing that i would read definitely against a lot of policy teams i think that uh, at a link level a lot of the arguments that you are going to make i think for teams that may pivot into like for instance things like workers strike being a model for things like democracy have so many good arguments about like why the idea of human rights relationships and human rights frameworks has tied to the idea of democracy necessitate a kind of way of like assuaging or coer not even assuaging coercing other countries into like modeling like u.s governance and i feel like you have so many good arguments to make about why that kind of is exactly what justifies continued carcerality as a global paradigm for, for how we deal with like punitive measures and how we're able to like destroy access to resistance i actually think that when policy teams in these areas attempt to kind of go a more traditional route and try to like win these kind of like large level extinction level or uh, international spillover claims at the level of like modeling i think that you have like really good link arguments to make about like why the kind of like necessity of a worker strike are for all the reasons that the u.s shouldn't be modeled and kind of like create the conditions of like inevitable suffering because of the way in which we're able to continue to privilege off of dispossession that has kick-started like global economies that the u.s is still participating in in order to coerce other countries into modeling what we think of as a good paradigm for people to be able to speak while simultaneously like using that as a way to exclude uh the ability to think about the lumpen proletariat's place in relationship to the worker to think about like how people are sectioned out of being able to access workers rights because of the ways in which like those like uh, hiring processes and racial capitalism and the continuation of like automation and industrialization have excluded them from being able to have like proper access to like the economy and things like that and I feel like building your link arguments against like the really hard line um, hard right apps on that uh, set of arguments is like really easy to develop but I think on the other side where you see teams that are going to move closer to the left and try to say that their workers strike are like necessary for a really revolutionary change within the state and the way in which we think about the role that the state plays I feel like you need a lot of strong arguments about like why the kind of like ability to think about like the worker strike actually strengthens the private and like public divide because of the way in which it uh the, not the private and public divide but why it strengthens the relationship between private enterprise and public governance because of the way in which it allows like the continued appeasement of small contingent uh things that are happening like within various types of enterprises without an actual structural change to the ways in which capitalism necessitates the continuation of strikes necess necessitates that continuation of violence and I think that there are so many good arguments that to be made about like why the same way that free speech has become a paradigm in which people have used to protest like what types of like forms of resistance are palpable and good that worker strike kind of mimic that same process and our history and being able to like assuage the way in which people were fearing the rise of things like communism etc and I think that in the back of all this you have a lot of really good arguments to be made about like what kind of like backlash to the worker strike looks like in places where like people 
people think about like the the kind of like fear that's already being created in America about like it becoming more communist and that being why we shouldn't have like things like a national health insurance system or why we shouldn't like transition into certain differential ways of thinking about climate change or like a national universal income etc all of these things kind of beg the question of like what actual structural changes will be made that I think uh, become a much more complicated question for these types of arguments to deal with and then I think when you kind of move this to like the question of the permutation debate you have a really strong set of arguments to make about like what it kind of looks like to um, set up mutual exclusivity when you're able to like push your alternative explanation into something that is like really really strongly anti-status I think that this is the part of the debate where you can have like the longest kind of like spread out portion about like why the state's relationship to resistance movements must be antagonistic and why those movements have to stay antagonistic to the state and why being like coerced or made palpable or um, recognizable by the state only feeds the ability for us to be re-coerced back into like forces of capitalism and anti-black violence and I think that this is the place where you really want to read to filth how the kind of like solidifying of a worker strike means that things like the the uh, prison system and carceral system and the lump of proletariat become highly secured and this underclass that makes our ability to assert ourselves as like workers and assert uh, the right to work as something that is like necessary as an organizing kind of like principle and I think that being able to like indict that kind of central framing along with arguments about why the state kind of uses this as a coercive method allows you to set up a lot of strong mutual exclusivity claims with also a lot of benefits to the alternatives perspective later on in the debate this then kind of begs the question of like how you're able to do impact comparison when like both of you could probably win arguments about why the continuation of capitalism causes extinction and why both of your arguments move in the right direction and i think that is really just a question of just like you should be able to pivot into a question of like our resistance for like our resistance against capitalism should not have to create another underclass in order for us to be able to destroy how like dispossession has created and kickstarted a process of industrialization that is necessitated the like existence of worker strikes in the first place and so like it's not even a question of who can get to the largest impact but literally how it is unsustainable to continue to solidify and create new underclasses through our ability to make our own like subject positions more recognizable and to make our own rights as workers seem as identifiable when those things become like really slippery once you get into the idea of like how other people are kind of like socially located in those things and then when you get to the alternative it becomes like the ability for you to take that as the reason why like theorizing from the lump of proletariat allows this kind of like total disruption and a lineage of kind of like black anarchism that refuses to be properly recognized by the state, whether it looks like the Soledad brothers, Assad's fugitive escape from prison, et cetera, uh, abolition and the way in which we promote particular anti-status, non-state reliance, kind of like methods of mutual aid that refuse the ability for these industries and for the state to even be able to make decisions that like are valued in the context of recognition and why then that kind of like refuses the paradigm that forces us to organize along an axis of such a worker that can only continue the creation of like an anti-black underclass via the same type of systems of development, coercion, etc. that have been like layered throughout history. Hopefully this video was helpful for you and hopefully you'll keep tuning in the videos I'll be doing and talking about racial capitalism on the worker strike resolution. And yeah, thanks.